Welcome, Welcome to, arcade to Arcade Attack. Player one, please press start. Gentlemen, start your engines. Player two has now entered the game. Player three, choose your weapon. Hello and welcome to the Arcade Attack Podcast. Boom. My name's Keith and as always I'm joined by Dylan. Hello listeners. And Adrian. Hello. And this week Adrian is going to take a look at something that was not and something that was but maybe could have been more. Yeah. Mm. Something that deserves a look. Yeah. Like a bit of a what if hmm. scenario. Maybe things could have been a bit different. Yeah. So. <laughs> and our regular listeners won't be surprised about what console it belongs to. <laughs> so, Adrian, take it away. Well, I was thinking it's time we redone the math. <laughs> because if you remember correctly, guys, on our first ever podcast, I uh, did a bit of a staunch defence of the old Atari Jaguar. You did. We and do like to defend the Jaguar here at Arcade Attack. We do. Some of us do. It's got a soft spot for a number of us, isn't it? We will have a Jaguar section at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to keep pushing it until it happens, so don't worry, guys. I'm on that battle. <laughs> now, I spent a bit of time looking at the console. We sp I spoke about the power of the console, why maybe it didn't really meet its full potential. And I did briefly discuss a little peripheral called the Atari Jaguar CD. Also, it sounds like... A the, the thing that should have been built in the console in the first place. That's right. Mm. That's right. Maybe it's a little twist, actually, because maybe that's a little plan they had for the future, actually. Uh. Yeah. Something, something known as the Jag CD. It is, like I said, a peripheral, and it attaches on top of the Atari Jaguar console. Oh, that's right. When you talked about it before, didn't you say people thought it looked like a toilet seat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does look like a no, toilet seat. I, I think it looks more like a spaceship, but there are, <laughs> there are people that think it looks like a toilet seat. Now... It was, they actually started, they actually announced this, this peripheral, the Jag CD, in November 1993. Um, it took a while for it to come out. It was, it was supposed to come out um, about a year after the Jag was, was made, okay. the actual original console. It didn't actually get onto our shores until 1995, oh, September no. the 21st. Our shores or worldwide? I, th I think that was worldwide. Well, well, oh, okay. And it retailed... Um, to, to buy the Jag CD cost about $150. So I, can't, I don't know how much it was in British pounds. Oh, so probably about 100 then, yeah. yeah. Maybe 100 quid. And I'll tell you what though, guys, if you can make a time machine, go back and buy some Jag CDs for 100 pounds. Because they're worth <laughs> a little bit more than that these days. How much are they worth now? Well, on, on eBay, a working Jag CD, all right, truthfully boxed maybe, obviously working, can go for about four or five hundred pounds. Holy what? moly, I just had a little heart attack. If not more. If not more, actually. Wow. Well, this you... is because there weren't many made, were there? I'll, I've got a bit more, I've done a bit more research on the numbers, actually. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I'll reveal a bit, a bit more of what we think is how many is actually out there. Absolutely incredible. It's, um, like I said, it took a few delays to come out. They finally released it when basically the Jag was on its last legs. Mm. It was, it was the, the worst last time, time, the worst time to release <laughs> that. It should have, ugh, should have gone at the time that the console came out. It should have. A year after makes kind of sense as well. You know, another year, bish bash bosh, upgraded yeah. system. That, but mm, you know, about possibly. two or three years later, wow. Yeah, it's bad. You know, um, yeah, they wanted to release it during the, the, the holiday season as well, during Christmas. But obviously it didn't even meet that really. Uh, it's a little bit like the 3DX, I think, actually. Oh, the 32X. Sorry, the 32X, not 3DX, yeah. 32X, sorry. That yeah. was a weird one. <laughs> yeah. Just generally, because Sega then released the Saturn 
few months later. That's right. It was, so it was a bit of, weird. Who was going to go and buy this thing for their Mega Drive when it was going to be dead? <laughs> it was going to be dead in a matter of months. They, they were bringing, their, they were bringing out cash. a 32-bit machine yeah, anyway. Yeah, they hang on to their cash and wait for the Saturn. But obviously that was end of 94, start of 95 when Sega started to lose their minds. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, know, for another day. I don't know what Atari and, and Sega were drinking during that period. Well, in but the mid-90s. Yeah, they, oh, crikey, they, oh, they could have ruled the world, those two, but it's crazy, yeah. really. Uh, a bit like the 32X, it slots in, the, the Jaguar City slots into the cartridge pool. Do you understand? Yeah, so it yeah. slots in. It's, actually, if you, look at, if you look at the Jaguar, there is this little area around it, like a sort of semicircle area, mm. and it fits in well. It does mm. look a little, kind of ugly, but also kind of cool, I think. So it slots in. Uh, two, you need another power supply as well, though. I think that's like the uh, 32X, 32X Mega CD. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, Imagine well, that, though. When you, if you have, I know we're going off track again, but yeah. Mega Drive. Um, with, that, with the massive adapter, the tower of Mega power. CD with the massive adapter, thirty two X with a massive adapter. You'd have to like phone your electricity company before you plug it all in. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. make sure the grid well, can yeah. take it. <laughs> yeah. I would still like that setup personally. Oh, I would. Yeah. But yeah, I do. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's true. So yeah, if you if you attach your Jaguar CD, my advice would be never take it out. And you might think, but how am I supposed to play the cartridge games? Uh, oh, supposed to I've seen a picture games. of it. And they're they're like, actually, what's quite, I like, I like the Jag CD. Slot in the Jag CD. At the back of the Jag CD, it's a little junky out bit at the back, and that's where you can put cartridges into it. It has a cartridge slot on the back of it, and that is ingenious, because you can just whack it in the Jag, leave it. Bingo, bango. And I think you can you can change the game. You can either play a Jag CD game or the cartridge game by using the, car, uh, using oh, the so controller. You can two games in it at once and just flip between the two. You can flip okay, between the two. Nice, nice but, feature. But it's a good feature, and actually it's probably a very necessary feature, because... If you keep taking the Jag CD in and out, it, it will break very easily. It'll break the pins. It'll break uh, that's the pins. Like, the pins. That's like the Saturn and the action replay cartridge. Mm. Once just you've got it, it in, just, left. Yeah. just leave it in. It stays there now. Just yeah. leave it in. Um, yeah, so, a bit like the Sega Saturn, um, like you're saying there. Um, and also, a bit, a bit later after the Jag CD came out, they actually released a memory track cartridge. So that, when you first got the Jag CD in a few games, you couldn't save any games. Ooh. But they eventually released a memory track cartridge which you could put in the back bit and that can save your save your games. So, okay. again, they're fixing things but a little bit too late, aren't they? This, it just, that just, in a nutshell, describes Atari at the time. Oh. If they'd have come up with all of that stuff at the beginning... Mm. Uh, it must have been in development, though. Yeah, they brought it out at the same time. <laughs> Difficult, though, because if they waited any longer, the Jaguar would have been obsolete Redundant. anyway. Yeah. That's right, that's right. And so, another little thing about the Jag CD, when you turn it on, you, you can actually uh, play music CDs. So you can actually play, play your audio CDs. And it's when you load it up, it's, it's got a virtual light CD machine. CD player that plays CDs. Woohoo! I know, so you can play music. <laughs> but what's, what's clever about it is, I, I haven't, I've seen a few screenshots of it. You, you put your, your seat music in there, and uh, it's an amazing sort of light show. So you, you've got a lovely sort of view on the TV screen. The Saturn uh, had something similar. Yeah, didn't the PlayStation as well? I don't, I, I don't remember using the PlayStation one. No. For playing oh, it did have a, yeah, it did it have a, um, that same thing. So you, it visualised. Yeah. Yeah, the, the same. Yeah, one. the they PlayStation had like a weird spaceshipy menu. Do you want to have a guess who designed, who, who, who actually made this software for Atari? Quite a famous Atari. Was it one player. of Atari's guys? Kind of, yeah. He made a good few games for Atari. David Crane. No. Nope. Um, good guess. Rob Fulop. Nope. Warren Robinett? I'm not not someone we've, we've interviewed yet, but hopefully oh, it will happen. Oh, it's... Um, oh. What is Tem- it? Tempest. It is. What's his name? It is Tempest. Oh, the Tempest guy. guy. Yeah. This, 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 oh, you know it. I know it. It's going to come to me. It's not going to come to me. Ready? Oh. Re- ready? My name is Jeff. Jeff Minter. Yeah, well done. Thanks, Jeff Minter. I knew it. I just couldn't remember. He's a bit of a bit of a ledge. A bit yeah. of a ledge. He also made, uh, I think, Breakout 2000 as well. He made. Have a you lot. lined him up for an interview? No? I have uh, yeah. Jeff. I asked him. And he, sort of, he said he would do it, but he hasn't replied yet. Jeff. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. He's busy, Stay with, he's busy with his sheep. He is. He loves his llamas and sheep. Yeah. He does. So I've, I've asked him about that. So maybe he's the one <laughs> the questions. We'll see. Uh, but no, he, apparently he offended nice. Jeff Minter. No, 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 I'm, I'm a fan. All right. <laughs> um, when you bought the Jag CD, you, you, you also got two games as well. So not only did it play music, you got two games. And the two uh, packing games was Blue Lightning and Vid Grid. What? Vid Grid. Vid Grid, which I think is a puzzle game. Uh, Blue Light, any idea what Blue Lightning could be? Some kind of 
strong role playing game. game. Strong side. That's why I like that. <laughs> I like it. Sorry. Uh, fighting game? It's not a fighting game. It's a it's a, it's a flying game. A little bit like um, Top Gun bit, on bit the like, NES. Like Top Gun. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it looks quite good though. Is it's it? Like is, what is it? Shooting it? Shooting yeah. up or it's, a flight scene? It's an afterburner. It's just like afterburner, ah, basically. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's just like oh, afterburner. We like a bit of afterburner. That's fine. Also, there was a music CD package in there. Tempest 2000 soundtrack. Hey, there wow. you go. So you've got That's quite a lot bad. for your hundred do- well, hundred and fifty dollars. Plus one more thing. A Mist demo disc as well. Ooh, the two- Mist was on this Jaguar. Yeah, that was one of the full games that was released. Gee, one yeah. of the four games. No, 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 one of the full, 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 full <laughs> games. <laughs> one of the four. There's games. more than four. Jack CD. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never seen a Jack CD game out in the wild. I, I, I really want to get a Jack CD. I do. I want to add it to the collection. Um, you're gonna have to uh, sell. Talk to, talk to Mrs. Adrian about that. Uh, it's a big investment. About 400, 500 quid. <laughs> They're a lot of money, but it's on the it's on the list. But it's quite a long list, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, the, so, Jack CD games can hold a lot of memory. So, about seven hundred ninety megabytes of data. So, you know, like a normal CD, like, like a normal CD, but it's obviously more than the old Jag cartridge could hold. Yeah. and it would just boost the graphics. You know, it's, it's just like enhanced version of the Jag. Didn't need that. Yeah, <laughs> po- yeah. That, that, I think that's fair. Who actually manufactured it for Atari? It wasn't actually Atari who made it themselves. They actually sort of was it a person who was 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 famous for making CD players? Uh, yes. Can I say Sony? It wasn't Sony. It's a good guess. No, uh, not at that time. They were Sanyo. Was it Sanyo? Panasonic. It wasn't Panasonic. Oh, that was a good guess. It's good. I like, I like Panasonic. Philips. As a guess. It was Philips. Philips. Yeah. Oh, I was boom, 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 boom. And it was manufactured in in America. So I think I told you in the last time, the first pod, that it was the I think the Atari Jaguar was the last ever console made in America. Yes, you did. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. can almost argue the Jag CD was the, the yeah. last 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 Atari last thing made. Last. That's when they gave up. They're like, oh, we'll just let the Chinese and the Japanese do it now. There is a lot of issues though. If you go on eBay, often a lot of people say Atari Jaguar broken, Atari Jaguar CD broken, buy for parts. So a lot when you you've got to be very careful with it. It doesn't have the best shelf life, so you've got to be very careful when you take it in and out. Not only got Philips, but is there that are the most common problem then. Yeah, uh, one problem is it, how do you when you open the the disc drive, uh, disc drive and you put put it on that sort of round circle bit. The spindle thing. The spindle it? thing. Yeah, yeah. That can push down very easily. What do you mean? Oh, well, so it can push down into the case. Yes. Oh. And if that pushes I've down, I've never come across that with any of my CD based systems. That's bad design. That is. Come it on. is disc based systems. That you've not heard that problem before then. No, I've no, not it's, heard that problem it's before. quite rare and actually. I think a lot of people, when that happens, it doesn't work because you can't read the disc properly. Yeah, and a lot of people just put it on eBay, but apparently it's relatively easy to fix. So if you. Uh, yeah. Shh, I should have kept that quiet. Yeah, because sh- yeah, you just get the guys down at Play Nation to fix it. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to be nice to our listeners, basically. There's only Atari Jaguar CD listeners <laughs> out there. <laughs> you never know. It's a small community. Right. How many units of the Atari Jaguar CD do you think were ever made? You told us. I think I, I think I've got the. I think I got that or wrong. Was it wrong? I think I, when I said the first part, I got it wrong. I've done a bit more digging around. How many produced? Okay, I'm going to say ten thousand. I think that's what I said in the original part. Oh, was it? Okay, well, that's, so. that's Keith's guess. 8, 000, well, that's, no, go on, go on. That's Keith's guess. That's Keith's guess. So you said that there was only two hundred and fifty thousand Jaguars ever made. That's yes. Okay, we don't know for certain, but that's the kind of ballpoint figure. So I reckon they would have made a tenth of that, twenty-five thousand. That's pretty close. The yeah. the rumours are. The initial shipment, the initial sort of batch of Jag CDs were 20,000. Boom! And apparently, they, they made that batch, and just when they were about to make another batch, Atari was just imploded. It just was so sold that was off. It. There was one batch, of the initial we, batch of 20,000. Again, that. it's a little bit hazy. It's a little bit hazy about whether they made any more after that, any more after this, the first big batch, but a lot of people think 20,000, only 20,000 knocking about. Oh, that's crazy. And no, a lot of those 20,000 are probably in the bin. Yeah, it's, it's sad, but it's probably true. Yeah. They're in the bin because they have the stupid spindle thing in the loft somewhere. Well, like, yeah. if if you can look after the Jag CD, yeah. listeners, if you've got a broken Jag CD, let us know. We will buy it for <laughs> not here yeah, for pennies. Yeah. Ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than going in the bin. That's right, definitely. Now, I you, you there wasn't many games in the Sorry Jaggy, was there? Not official games at the I time. I think you've got most on that shelf over there. <laughs> I've got a lot. Got most of them. I've got about half of them. There's roughly about 60 odd official games. There's more being made now, to be fair. So mm. it, the, the list grows all the time. So about, we'll say about 60, 70 odd maybe Jag, jag I games. Can't, I can't comprehend that. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? My dream is to it own them crazy. all. I've got, I've got quite it's a few of them. It's a dream now. that, you know, 
It's attainable. It's, it is. But how many Jag CD games were ever made? 13. That's Four. A, that is, that, you know, <laughs> in this, go cut down a little bit. Between those, you, seven. A bit higher. Ten. A little bit more. Yeah, 11. <laughs> there were 11. Whoa. Apparently, 11 official games are made for the system. At the time, there's been more games since. since All the homebrew the, stuff. Homebrew stuff is. is but do you want, are, are, it's such a small list, I wanted to tell you about it. Is that right? It won't yeah. take long. It won't, so the A to Z, or, or the, B, <laughs> the B to S. The B2S. Which, which, let's oh. don't read too much into that. The B2S of uh, Jag CD games. And there's a few exclusive games. Oh, ooh. Baldies is the first game. Baldies? Baldies. Is it about so me? It's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a puzzle game. It was initially exclusive. I think it was later ported to other systems, but it was supposed to be an original start. And Baldies is a bit of a puzzle game. Um, Battle Morph. That sounds better. The sequel to Cybermorph. Boom. Nice. The there sequel you go. to Cybermorph. And I think the green lady. Oh, yeah, the floating green lady. Let's change to a floating blue lady. Ooh. So there you go. Look there you go. That, that is that is. Using the colour planet. <laughs> the palettes, even. Yeah. Um, blue lightning. We told you Blue about lightning. That, yeah, Which actually looks pretty exciting. good. Um, Brain Dead 13, which was a port. I haven't heard about Brain Never Dead 13. Never heard of that. What no. Was it? Is that like an arcade? I, I, I yeah. haven't done any. No. Look. Brain Dead 13. You would have heard about this though, Dragon Slayer. Oh, yeah. That is in the Jack CD. Fair dues. Yeah, good old Dragon Slayer. Ah, oh, a proper exclusive now, only available in the Jack CD, Highlander. The last of the McClouds. Oh god. They made a Highlander game! And it was, I think it's based, not actually on the films, I think it's based on the TV series. The TV, it? or even the cartoon. Oh, or, yeah, one oh, of those the two. cartoon, I guess. I think it was one of those two, and actually, it's a bit of an RPG. Oh, it's, right. uh, it looks okay, it looks pretty it's interesting. Right, yeah. yeah. So, it's, you know, something I, I would probably want to get if I ever got a Jack yeah. It's on that list. Um, Hover Strike. So, a bit of a sequel to Hover Strike, The Unconquered Lands. <laughs> so, I've got actually Hover Strike on the Jag. Mm. Okay. But this is kind of the sort of uh, the sequel to it. Iron Soldier 2. Oh, okay. And that's interesting because Iron Soldier, which again I've got, mm. you can get Iron Soldier 2 on the Jag and also Iron Soldier 2 on the Jag CD. What's the difference I believe. between them? I think it's better, slightly better graphics. It's it's smoother. Yeah. You know, it, the Jag, I, I quite like Iron Soldier actually, but it's a very blocky sort of game. I think you showed Jag. it to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 right. it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, but actually that was originally cancelled. That was cancelled, but luckily, uh, a good few years ago now, but Telegames, they basically pretty much finished the game, so they did release it. And uh, yeah, so luckily up, that was a game that pre wasn't supposed to come out, but it did find a way. Missed. Missed? So, yeah. wow. Not just the demo, you can get the full game as well. <laughs> wow. Is it? Oh, I've got to find out to see if it's as good as the PC version. I, that's a good question. <laughs> it's not, but <laughs> still. It's ah, not. Primal Rage. Oh, yeah. A port, of, obviously. Is there Primal not a Rage. cartridge version of that? Uh, no, on, on the Jaguar. Not on the Jaguar, it's only oh, on the okay. CD, so there Didn't you go. Uh, I have it on the Mega Drive, it's not a bad game, it's, it's a tire beat, isn't it? I used to quite it? like it, I'm, yeah. so is, I imagine it's much better looking in the Mega Drive version. Right? Yeah, it does look pretty good, I believe. I've seen it, I'm, again, I don't own these games, unfortunately, but it looks good. Robinson's Requiem. Which, that rings a bell, uh, what's that? I, again, I, I, I honestly That really rings a bell, what is that? I need to, again. I, I need to look more into this, but it was cancelled. But it, again, was later released by Songbird Productions. Uh, Space Ace, which is a bit like Dragons, uh, there, I believe, isn't it? Space Ace. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. Big Grid, which I think is a bit of a puzzle game. I yeah, told you earlier. And the last one, World Tour Racing. Okay, a racing game. Which again was cancelled, but late was late, only released a couple of years off Jag CDs, which was not really a home as such, you know. And again, that's supposed to be a very good driving simulator, actually, very, very good. So there you go. But that, that's it. That's the list. That is the list. That is that is the official list of release games for the Jag CD. So you could pretty much complete that in no time at all, couldn't you? Oh. Jag CD. Well, that's why you never see them in the wild. No. Petro games are Actually, bad. a lot of the games, a lot of the Jag CD games, aren't that expensive on eBay. I say they're not as expensive as the, the cartridge games, it seems. So mm. You should get them anyway. I might might yeah, start picking yeah. them up. Yeah, just get I them. Might anyway. just get, get the games. Get the 11, and then. If you've got well, the games, then you have to get the. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we'll, so we'll, have the, we'll get a broken one, and we'll get the guys that exactly. fixed it. I know, I'm just thinking of him helping him in the argument with the misses. Yeah. Oh yeah, games. I've got the games. I've got nothing to play them. That's true, if you've got the game, you need the thing to play, play it on. Baldies, I'm dying to play some Baldies. I've got Baldies. Um, not the strongest lineup of games, is that fair though? Uh, 
we, 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 having not played any of them, I don't know. Yeah, but, um, I think that, it doesn't yeah, sound like could, a particularly. I'm not surprised because they lineup. couldn't ha- they couldn't get third party yeah. developers on board. There's not a lot of third party developers there. The problems with the console are well documented. I don't know whether they made it any easier for the CD. I'll lead you. Ooh. I'll let you explain. Before I, I crack on with another sort of slight angle in this podcast, I just want to finish off by saying it's not all doom and gloom for the Jag CD. There's a homebrew scene, and it's very, very, very prominent right now. Uh, if you go on a website called Atari Age, there's a really good sort of list of, of all the homebrew games you can buy. There's cartridge games, but a lot of them are for the Atari Jag CD. Very, very good. And again, some of those games have pushed the console, I think, to its almost limit. So some really, really good development going on there. Uh, actually... But, this is, this is an interesting guy, uh, idea, guys. Just before the, the, the Jag CD kind of phased out, apparently Atari and Sigma Designs, uh, they had a bit of an agreement and they were looking to make a PC board and that would allow you to play P- uh, Jag CD games on your PC. How crazy would that be? <laughs> so you buy like a PC board, chuck it in your PC and you can put in Jag CD games. Oh, that- it's just like, what you mean, like a graphics card? A graphics card, yeah. Would you, uh, do you reckon that would have changed the fortunes at all? Nah. <laughs> well, it's my earlier point, isn't it? So, because they couldn't, because it was so hard to develop games on it, and because Atari yeah. didn't bother coming up with their own development tools, if the company didn't already have its existing, a lot of those games you mentioned there, like Iron Soldier yeah. 2 yeah. and the other ones, are by companies who are used to, who have made their own, who would, would have made their own development tools when making those Jag games, mm-hmm. those early ones, so they can just port it to the, the CD. You're not going to see someone like Electronic Arts come in and go, oh yeah, let's try and take something for the Jaguar. Um, okay, where's the development tools? Oh, there aren't any. Okay, bye. Well, like you said, it's very hard to make games on the Jag, the Jag CD, ridiculously hard. It's, mm. it's, it's why a lot of consoles are It's like they failed. have to do it in assembly language. That's crazy, man. <sighs> come on. Madness. Madness. Before I move on to my... Um, I've got a little fact here. This is interesting, actually. Now... It's, it's, it's more morning to the Tory Jag and not Jag CD, so a little, slightly off, off kilter a little bit. But apparently, a, you remember the, the story about Atari burying all those old uh, ET games oh, yeah, in the yeah. landfill? Yeah. It's got, true. It's I a, watched the film. Yeah. It's a good, good documentary, isn't it? Yeah. A little, another little interesting fact. Apparently, when Atari Jaguar, the, the Atari made loads, loads of shells of the Atari Jaguar. They just hadn't sitting there. So they, they went probably in a warehouse in gathering cases, dust, yeah. lo- just the shells, nothing inside it. Apparently they sold these shells to a US dentist manufacturer and they used Atari Jaguar shells to make an e- x-ray machines um, that, could li- you know, that could obviously x-ray your teeth. And they were sprayed white. Wow. So in America, some dentists might have Atari Jaguar shells stuck to the wall, sprayed white, and, they, and inside they're like that X-ray is, machines. That is brilliant. That's crazy. How crazy yeah. is that? that is crazy. I've seen a picture. They look absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. That is just amazing, isn't it? That is. Right. Just before the Atari Jaguar and the Jag CD was kind of gone and, and done and dusted, uh, there's a little twist. There's a little twist because maybe another sort of what if question before we get to the big what if question is uh, they, were, they were thinking, they actually started to make something called the Atari Jaguar Duo. Have you heard about this? No. What, what, what do you think it could be? What is all this newness you're teaching yeah, so us today? It's, it's uh, going to be one system with yeah. the CD drive. Oh, is it like the multi-mega? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh. So it's a, a built-in system. There's no separate peripheral. You just it's a, it's a Jaguar and it's got a little flippy bit as well and it, it looks pretty cool. That's what it should have been in the first place. Right. It's an interesting. Uh, there's been actually there are some prototypes. There were prototypes made. Do you want to see a picture of it? Oh, cool. I know yes, our, our, our listeners can't see it. I think I've got you can. You can hear our reaction. Yeah. I, I, I see what you think about it. I'll tell you what other people said it looks like. What do you think about that thing? <laughs> it, uh, it looks like one of those phones you get in an office. It does a bit. It's oh, a, well, like the in the conference room. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. it looks like a conference yeah. room. <laughs> People say it's like bathroom scales a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Yes, it's a Jaguar Duo. I'm not sure scales. if it's ugly or... I think it's it is. It's just a bit... Yeah. <laughs> just with the whole Jag- Jaguar thing, it's just a bit... Yeah. Meh. It, <laughs> it was unveiled in 1995, this prototype, but it was cancelled before production began. That, and that's, I think, probably, probably for the best. Someone has got that prototype somewhere and they're enjoying it. They're enjoying their 11 CD games along with the 60 <laughs> Jaguar Could games. Could you imagine? Around. Yeah, they're having a good time. 
I, I think it's a bit of a sad end to Atari. I think we all agree that, haven't we? I know they're still yeah, around yeah, and making yeah, yeah. games, but that was the end of their kind of work on consoles. But I reckon, I do think, and this is where, it's, like, it's part two of the podcast, really. I think maybe things could have been different. How so? Because there were 11 titles released, none of them really stood out. I don't think there's any proper stinkers in that list, truthfully. That's what I've been looking at online. Mm. The reviews look not too bad, but nothing amazing. But they needed that launch title, didn't they? They needed one kick ass title. That re- well, the reason I bought the Switch was because of Zelda, if I'm of being course. honest. That was the main reason. I thought, I want to play Zelda, Bish Bash Bosh. I've got no regrets buying the Switch. But that was the reason. The big game mm-hmm. enticing, isn't it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, I got in contact with someone who used to work at Atari. And he, he worked on certain games, like, like good old Club Drive. And he was making a bit of a name for himself in the graphics department. And apparently, um, I'm not sure when this meeting took place, but I'd love to be a fly in the wall. They they got together all the Atari big hit, uh, big you know, the big wigs. They all got together, including including a person I interviewed called BJ West, and they were looking for a new game to launch the Atari Jag CD. A new game. Apparently, in the meeting, the first things they were talking about was a a platforming mascot to rival Mario and Sonic. No, that was the first discussion. Apparently. Uh, par- it's, a great, it's a relevant discussion to have. I know it's a relevant discussion to have. You, you can Mass- see what they're so start- big in them it's, days. It's they're not so much now. In hindsight, but they're not so much ah. now. But in the nineties, you needed mascots. Yeah. But what, what animals were discussed to be this mascot? I've got a, I've got a few little. Uh, Jaguar. S- that would have worked. It wasn't actually a Jaguar. <laughs> Jerry the Jaguar. <laughs> Jerry the Jaguar. Yeah. I've got three animals that apparently were discussed, but they were they were quickly regarded uh, rejected. Um, ducks. A character that was a duck. Yeah, it's been done. Two Donald, yeah, two Donald. Donald. An alligator? Two. No. Gex? Wasn't Gex an alligator? Was no, it? he was like, he was a lizard. Wasn't oh, he's a lizard, gecko. yeah, that's fair. Gecko, yeah. He was a gecko, duh. Yeah, and the <laughs> last animal, I don't know, this, this might have worked, an armadillo. Oh, that would have worked! <laughs> Can you imagine a platform we could roll in the ball and spin? That, that's imagine that! <laughs> yeah. Imagine doing something like that. That would have worked. Now, Bubsy! Bubsy. Oh, <laughs> no. Bubsy. We've already seen Bubsy in the Jag. That didn't really work, did it? Now, I wish I saw this meeting because apparently a lot of these ideas were chucked about. No one really liked it, you know. Bish bash bosh, and I love. I can imagine good old BJ, good friend of the show, by the way. I'm sure he gave us a really good interview. Good old BJ. BJ. <laughs> I think I just can imagine now. He stood up and he said, "I've got an idea," and he gave. Yeah, and honestly, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not trying to have a you know belittle him at all because I think it's a great idea. He he had this um, really ambitious idea of an open world game, a cyberpunk game. A game where you you could choose what what you wanted to do. You could go where you wanted, and it was uh, it sounded like it. It sounded ridiculously ambitious yeah, and yeah. at a more mature audience. You know, mm-hmm. it was. I think you know this. This I'm talking, guys. Maybe 995 at the time. Yeah. Think about that. Think about this. And it apparently the, the guys at Atari loved the idea. Said this is the game. This is the game. Um, so and actually, if you go to uh, there's a site for this game, uh, Black Ice White Noise. That's the name of the title. Love it. It's a I good love name, the isn't title. it? I think it's brilliant. And I love this. I love this. And on the website, there's still a website available for it. There's a little little slogan, a little tidbit, and it says here, "What is the biggest open world action game you can name?" Uh, that's right. That, no, I got that wrong. But what is the biggest open world action game you can Grand name? Thought. Yeah. And it, when did it really kick off being 3D? And open? I'm talking this should be a 3D game, by the way. Two thousand. One, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, Grand and that's... Grand Theft Auto Good. Yeah. So, Grand Theft Auto 3 was... PS2, one, GTA 3, yeah. One of the first proper 3D open world games. So, Black Ice, White Noise was a way ahead of its time, I think. Mm. How crazy would that be? It would have been, been six years yeah. before. That's crazy. It's madness, isn't it? Now, I, I've i got a few a few questions I asked BJ, the man behind this, and one of the questions I asked um, is... Uh, how did you get the opportunity to manage this title and start on one of the first open world titles? And he, he literally, I'll, I'll read out his quite a few quotes here. He said, by a complete fluke of circumstances, we were finishing the first wave of internally developed games, but the executives didn't want to see, or didn't have a clear vision of what game to make next. We were all asked to pitch ideas for a platform hopper design to feature a new official mascot character, the way that Nintendo had Mario and Sega had Sonic the Hedgehog, but they never liked any of the ideas and the characters we came up with. I broke with a request and submitted a bunch of proposals for games in other formats and genres. Among them was a high-end open-world cyberpunk adventure game called The Chaos Agenda. Chaos Agenda? I know. 
Which sounds a bit too similar to Chaos Engine. Well, actually, he had to change the name uh, for trademark reasons. I don't know if it was the Chaos Engine, but he had to change it. It probably was because of the Chaos Engine. But they loved it, and it, it, apparently they, they asked some focus groups about the idea, the you know, test focus groups, and it, it, apparently they loved the idea, and they went for it. So they, they based, and they renamed it Black Ice, White Noise. Um, so, yeah, it, it was known as Chaos Agenda originally. Before that, it was called, it was called Cyberpunk City. Cyberpunk City. What's the best name out of those? Black Ice White Noise. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Black Ice White Noise. Love it. it is brilliant. Um, it was being developed by Kelp Entertainment and it was planned to be published by Atari in December in 1995 for the Atari Jaguar CD. Ah. So basically a launch title. That was mm. the plan. Or ju- just after. It, 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 this is what you get for the Jaguar CD, a proper open world game. Nothing like this has been released before. Mm. That would get people buying it, wouldn't it? Of course it would. Yeah. It would get interest at least, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, there would have been hype about it and build up and people would have been excited for it. Well. And, and don't forget, this was this was made before the Matrix, but it's quite the plot is kind of similar to the Matrix. Oh, mm. um, also influenced by the works of William Gibson, who I think basically almost invented cyberpunk. Oh, if I got that wrong, I apologise. But I know he was a big influence on the yeah. cyberpunk scene. Um, and it, it it takes place in uh, in the future, forty years in the future. Where do you think it takes place? Where? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a place in America, what do you reckon? Los Angeles? No. Nope. Uh, New York? No. Nope. Detroit? San Francisco. Oh, that was going to be my next guess. It's a good guess. I think, I think it's called New San Francisco, maybe. So there you go. Another new... Not San Angeles, like in Demolition Man. <laughs> exactly. San Angeles. <laughs> that would have been cool if it was there. <laughs> um, the game was designed on a large 3D city map. You know, very similar to all Grand Auto 3. Obviously not quite the same graphics, but... Talk about how amb- ambitious is that? How ambitious? And you could apparently take control of three characters or pr- uh, protagonists. Mm. Um, I like this. I don't know if they ever had names, if I'm being honest, but there's three characters. L- guys, the first character is a slick, styling, Arsenio Hall-esque black <laughs> hacker dude. So I think they kind of based it on <laughs> Arsenio Hall. Actor from... You know, you, we know the actor, don't we? Which actor? He's from... Um, uh, coming to America, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, he's a, we like him. But a kind of cool... I'm just looking at both of these guys with a quizzical look. Like, who? He's a friend of Eddie Murphy's. Oh. He was quite big in the 80s, uh, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, I know who he is. I think he's a bit of a stand-up yeah. as well. Keep going Google, go on Google. Yeah. <laughs> second, second person you could potentially control is a beautiful, ass-kicking Japanese female street samurai. There street, you go. That's yeah, a street, street samurai. samurai. Well, the, the worst kind of samurai, or the best, how you want to look at it, I suppose. Street. And there was, and the last character, this long-haired, mirror-shaded, leather jacket, um, alcoholic burnout, a bit of a rocker got to do. It looks like pretty cool guy. It's yeah. what's really, really clever about it, though. And again, I, I think, well, talk about ambitious. Um, you can walk around the town, and if if you get in trouble with the police, you can hack in to the internet or see space, as they call it in the game. And if you've got yes. uh, if you if you've got in trouble with the police, you can actually delete it's your criminal like records. Watchdogs, but twenty years yeah. earlier. It's watchdogs amazing. ripped it off, man. Yeah. Well, they should sue Watchdogs. You can enter the sea space, which is basically the internet, and you can hack computers, police hovercrafts, taxis, nice. erase your criminal records. Um, very very similar mechanics to apparently System Shock. So again, okay. what, this is this is an amazing idea, isn't it? Ambitious ideas. B J West, credit man. I mean, for goodness sake. He, this game could have been huge. Uh, how apparently the game is large, about forty or fifty game miles. So you, you imagine you can walk around. Mm. Look at that potential. That's huge. Right. Again, nineteen ninety-five. And again, to squeeze that on a CD as opposed mm. to a DVD. Madness. Um, how are they doing this? Man? I, ten ten doing? discs or something. One, <laughs> one disc. One There's going to be one. There's going to be oh, one, one disc. disc. I, I have no yeah. idea how they did it. Or, or, or you know, we're trying to do it at least. Yeah. Now. If you walked around town, you can meet lots of people, apparently. And if you met people, there's uh, FMV conversations, so proper uh, film conversations. Wow. Yeah, again, this is this is pushing it out. And they did a lot of filming for this, like prop. Well, I say proper actors. I think they, they did it in one day shoot. Game actors. Yeah. Game actors, and it, it was pretty good. Um, and apparently, you can choose different attitudes to help you with different conversations, and how you act is how people look look at you, and so forth. You know. It, so uh, there's, there is objectives in the game apparently but you can play the game how you want to play it so you can be a good guy a bad guy kind mm. of in the middle which I know is kind of norm these days 
But it is now. Okay. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, lots of guns available as well, and there's weapon shops uh, for you to use and, and, and enter and so forth. Um, yeah, I mean, again, your reputation can build up or go down. You can assassinate. There's lots of assassination type type missions. Um, it, the plot is really quite quite deep as well. Absolutely incredible. You know, it does sound like so what it happened? would have blown everyone away. This what way. happened? Well, here you go. Actually, yeah, at least you got, this is another question I, I asked good old BJ. I said, how close was the game to yeah. completion? And what are your views on how the whole game was managed by Atari? Oh, yeah, I, I, I'll bleep some of this. Well, I'll read out his answer, and I, I think he doesn't hold any punches, which I really do respect. He said basically, as with every game developed for the Jaguar, we were hobbled by the archaic development environment. <laughs> oh. yeah. We were supposed to build uh, the game using old PCs and Atari SD computers. <laughs> what? I know. You're trying to build the most ambitious game you've ever made for a console. Ah, uh, because they were the computers oh, already around. So, you know, you can see why. <laughs> yeah, don't um, give them the actual tools to do the job. No, Just let them, well, yeah. Well, BJ demanded contemporary tools, including new new Macs, workstations, but mm. obviously, well, apparently, I'm just taking this out of uh, BJ's uh, mouth now. They, they, Atari hated it, but reluctantly he finally gave in, apparently. They did give in eventually. Okay. They did give him the tools. Um, but they you know, this game was very close to getting getting completed, and it was ridiculously. It's all it's so near to completion. I'll give you some proper stats in a minute. Mm. But they kept pulling out artists, cutting back on programmers. Um, really, and it just eventually the game just slowed, kept slowing down. The progression slowed, slowed down, and a lot. Of, well, BJ believes the game was pretty much seventy percent complete. Can you believe that? Seventy percent complete. <sighs> so close to finishing what could have been a groundbreaking game. You know, what a shame. it is a massive shame. Um, yeah, a lot of motion video as well being shot, um, all being processed into the game as well. So, if different parts of the town you went into, it all tied in really nice to the video. It was so, so close. And I, what a great little fact. Can you imagine this? Apparently, nine inch nails were very, very close to actually doing the soundtrack <laughs> of the game. Why, why do you think they didn't do the soundtrack? Uh, probably by the time it came around to getting them, the thing Atari went. Well, well, apparently, oh, yeah. good old uh, Trent Reznor himself was actually really keen to do it. Really yeah. keen. He liked the idea. He thought this is my kind of scene. Yeah. But Atari offered very little money. Oh, and I don't know so how. I was going to say, was it because it, it was money? And they they offered him with like a fiver and a bag of chips. Well, I, I will defend Atari to the cows come home, but they are a bit cheap in some of the decisions. Mm. They got bad a splash decisions. of cash. Bad, bad, bad money decisions. to make money. Can you, can you imagine a new game, Cyberpunk? You know, with Nine Inch First Nails. First open world game, oh. Nine Inch Nails soundtrack in the mid nineties. Madness. I'd have been interested in buying one of these things. And another, and now, oh, I'm getting really frustrated now because apparently <laughs> uh, there was a movie company, uh, a quite a big movie company, who liked the idea of this game. They liked the idea of, of the video they've already filmed, and there was talks of Atari to actually turn Black Ice White Noise into a film. So they could have had a film launched maybe just after the yeah. game that ties. Can you imagine that? It's a movie tie-in. It been huge. It could have ended up being like a <sighs> massive franchise as well. Uh. But. Atari demanded too much money for the movie rights oh. and the negotiations d died quickly. So not only were they tight, they were greedy as well. I don't understand. Well, the thing about, well, obviously Atari went belly up during mm -hmm. the computer game <sighs> crash. Yeah. yeah. For them to get back to sort of making games, making consoles was a thing of miracles anyway. My but words. yeah, they, they just made the same mistakes again. Well, I, I, you know, you saw how you... Try not to swear. <laughs> Messed it up the first time around. No. Just to make the same mistakes all over again. It's just, oh, Atari. Could you imagine, though, like, if they made this game? It, it, it could have been a huge with Nine Inch Nails, the movie. Yeah. It could have really been. Again, we will never know. We will never know for certain. But it could have really been. It could have been the jump start Atari needed. The proper back into the limelight. Yeah. You know, that, they just didn't back themselves enough. And because they just didn't get those dev tools... Uh, for the Jaguar, the one thing they had to do was get one team in. But there, and there was a, there was a definite tools. desire for that as well. If you, if you think of all the games that came out in the years, the you know yeah. immediate years yeah. afterwards, the Resident Evil, etc. Yeah, people lapped that stuff up. Oh yeah, they loved it. And this and would have been loved it. like that in an open world. <laughs> you know, if they'd actually followed through on this, 
with the cash. It just sounds amazing. It could have been I want to go and huge. check out. Yeah, I want to oh. go to the website and check it out. Well, look, if you do go to the website, which is um, bjwest.com slash b-i-w-n, which is obviously black ice, white noise, you can actually buy uh, the demos. You can actually buy oh, wow. s- some of the builds of the game. There's two yeah. builds available. There's two sort of versions of the game. And obviously, they're not What did complete. he publish it on? On the CD? Yeah, it's for the Jag CD. So he... You so you know, you'd, no, you'd have to have the Jag CD. I believe that's the case. Oh, that's All right, so you can't build it on. I, the if I do get a Jag CD, I'm getting that straight away. I'm getting, and I would, and they're relatively cheap. They're quite not too expensive, about thirty dollars, I think. Mm. So it's not. So not does it just bad. play up until a point, and then it just stops? Yeah, and it, there's no real story as such. You know, it's not all been completely implemented. I don't think you can walk around the town. It's very a sparse, a sparse town, so it takes a while to meet people. But you get a good feel of the idea of the mm. game. You know. So there's revision. You can buy revision ninety, which I think apparently. Um, uh, no, sorry, you, you can actually get revision eighteen and revision twenty three. Um, again, it's, it could be worth getting. Get them, <laughs> but they're collectible and they're worth checking out because obviously you're not getting the full game, but you get you get a feel for it. The game was finally cancelled in January nineteen ninety six. Finally cancelled, and very very soon after that, Atari was on its last legs truthfully um, it is a big big shame now the soundtrack I know it's not quite Nine Inch Nails but actually they did make a proper soundtrack for it and uh, it, good music apparently and I've heard a bit of it well I don't say apparently it is good music and they did they didn't quite, quite get Nine Inch Nails but they did get a Grammy nominee oh Andy Armour to actually uh, make the CD, so quite a respected musician. Okay. Um, I don't know much about his back catalogue, truthfully, but he is, res- he is respected. He's, he's known well in the industry, and, and it's worth checking out the music. Again, that can be bought from the website as well. So there you go. Right. This is gaming history. You should go in and get this. Yeah, things. I mean, when I first heard about this game, probably about a year ago, I haven't, you know, took, I probably stumbled across it when I was doing a bit of Jag research and stuff, and I thought this game, man, and this, ga-, and I wanted. That's why I did the podcast today because I wanted to talk about this yeah. game, and I wanted to say. Uh, do you think there's any chance it can ever be fully released? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Uh, uh, f- I don't... It could happen. I know the answer because I've well, read the interview. <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little tease, a little tease, because I've te- already told you the homebrew scene's pretty big, isn't it? Hmm. I'm pretty sure the Atari Jaguar fans right now would love it, wouldn't they? They'd lap it up. They would. They would. They would. And I actually literally asked BJ, this is one of our final questions... Would you ever be tempted to try and complete and release Black Eyes White Noise? Because he's got a lot of the old files, got a lot of the old CDs, and he was quite blunt with his answer. <laughs> he said, oh, "It's a bit of a shame because I don't really want to read this out." I, I, when I asked the question, I thought, "Please come back with a positive answer." He literally said, "Not a chance." Oh. Despite me offering to buy the game from Atari as we were laid off, they preferred to put it all in the dumpster. That's typical oh, that's Atari. Atari. Oh. Stick it all in a... Yeah, bury it. in <laughs> landfill, like poor old E.T. <laughs> well, look, he's, apparently, BJ, he's, he, I've got the game docs, but very little of the assets w- we'd need to finish the game, including the live-action video, which would be crucial. We'd largely have to start over from scratch, and even then, we'd end up with an extremely dated deriv- derivative game on an underpowered platform. Now that's it, doing it, doing it from the ground oh. up now. It's just no point. No, because you're working. You have to work with the Jaguar is the first thing. Secondly, all of those actors and actresses no. are going to be dispersed. They're going to be a lot older than they yeah. were back but in I mean, those but days. Also, I so mean, it'll, be, it'll be pointless. We would have seen it'll it be all before. Yeah. Um, but oh, what a shame. Polish up the builds, though. If the builds are playable, yeah, then that's fine. That's Just fine. Just enjoy those. But if they're not, then you just get them to like a playable state and just say it's a game. Do you want to hear the little? Um, this was the kind of, I think the sort of blurb for the game when it, uh, for, it I quite like this. Get me pumped for this game. I can't ever play. Black <laughs> Ice White Noise was supposed to be the most advanced cyberpunk adventure game of its time on the most cutting edge game machine on the market. PlayStation. Well, <laughs> yeah. <good one. laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's very very sad. And again, it is. I, I like this little quote actually. Uh, I think I, I imagine BJ made this up. The most legend, legendary game never released for the most obscure platform game platform of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty oh, much. It, and I, I just earlier, Keith Keith showed Dylan a, a cover of the, the front cover. The cover art, yeah. I think these are being docked. I don't think they're the official covers. I'd like to think not. Yeah, it looks doesn't quite give the game its justice. But 
have a look. I like it. I, I like <laughs> it. It looks good. It's got the three characters. Yeah. <laughs> look, I'll finish there basically, but I just think if that game was released and it was properly marketed, and if we, we spoke about the decisions, who knows what, what could have happened to Atari? You know, who knows? We could be playing Black Ice White Noise 5 right now. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you never know. In VR. Could you? Oh, wow. <laughs> Saga Punk City. It, oh. So there you go. If you want to check out the rest of the interview, please go to Arcade Attack. It's it's a good read. Uh, you know, I, I, I like the Atari. I don't think BJ, he's, he's a, he actually worked at Atari. I think he saw it from the from the actual inside and he's, he was quite revealing. I really am starting to hate the way that ex-Atari guys talk about the company. It's, it's, it's like none of them have what, anything a, nice nice, to say. A, nice, a nice word to say about Yeah, but them. if they're just being honest. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We like honesty at Arcade Attack. We do. We do, we do. So there you go, guys. Um, black ice, white noise. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch regarding this week's episode or anything else, you can tweet us at Arcade Attack UK, at Keith Barlow 82 and at Arcade underscore Adriano. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcade Attack UK. Please check out our website at arcadeattack.co.uk for lots of retro gaming goodness, interviews, reviews, features, top tens, etc. And you can also find all our previous podcasts there. Our podcasts are available to stream from the website and from SoundCloud and are available to download for free from Stitcher, Podbean and iTunes where you can also leave us a review and a rating which we would really, really appreciate. So, until next time, take care and we'll speak to you soon. Game over, yeah.